Crafty Gemini. I post weekly how-to video tutorials right here on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm giving you a sewing machine review of the new Janome DC 2014. If you're one of my Facebook fans, then you probably already know that I recently joined forces with Janome Sewing Machines and I'm basically going to be trying out some different machines, telling you about them, doing some machine reviews. So let's jump right into talking about the DC 2014. This machine is brand new. It's new in this line. They have other machines that are DC. Last year's was 2013, the year before 2012. So Janome basically comes out with the exact same machine, it just has a different color. So that already tells me that it's definitely a workhorse and it's a machine that is good, right? Because if they're keeping all the configurations and everything exactly the same every year and just changing the color, I know that it's tried and true. Now if after watching this review you like the machine but you may not like the color purple, no worries. In previous years, they came out with other colors. There's a green, an aqua color, a pink one. And so I'll include a link in the description box below on where you can find the machine in this color and in the few other colors in the previous year's models, okay? It comes with a hard cover and you can see that it has an opening up here so you don't have to remove your thread if you're taking the machine with you to go. And then the handle, it just pops in to the machine and to carry it, you just pop it out and you can carry your machine. It's not very lightweight, but it's definitely a portable machine, okay? And I like that, because that way you know it has some metal parts in there. So let's get rid of this. Here has a spool. Here's for winding the bobbin. It has very clear instructions on how to wind it. This is your tension dial. Another thing about this machine is that it has speed control. So if you're a beginner, or you're teaching a child or something, you want to have it on the slowest setting. And then if you're like me and have no patience, you want to put it all the way to the fastest setting, okay? Then you can see all the stitches that this machine has. It has a ton of decorative stitches. The machine comes with the instruction book. All the instructions are in here. It walks you through all the different accessories that come with it. And the accessories are housed here. You can tilt this forward and everything is right in here. So it comes with a walking foot spool caps, a pack of needles. Let me pull this out so you can see. A ton of different presser feet. There's ones with guides on them. You got your zipper foot, your buttonhole foot. You got some bobbins in there. This is your buttonhole foot. A second spool so that you can add two threads and sew with that. And then of course your seam ripper, your little screwdriver, a quilting guide. Basically, the basic supplies that come with a new machine that's on the market these days, okay? And then this part is the, oops, let's put these back in here so you can see it holds quite a bit. And this is kind of cool because on a lot of other machines, the walking foot is too big to keep in here so you have to store it separately, but I like that it actually fits in there as well with no problems. Now, this whole accessory plate comes off. So the machine does have a free arm as well. This is great for when you're hemming around cuffs or pants or sleeves, especially if you're making clothes for younger kids. If we turn it around, we can see barely, let me see if I can tilt it for you. Down here is a little lever that can go left or right. And this is where you put your feed dogs down. So for doing free motion quilting and stuff, for threading it or for changing anything here, fixing stuff, changing out your light bulb, this just, pops open super easily, okay? Now, the machine also has an automatic needle threader in here. And I'm gonna show you how this works. Super easy to thread, first of all. Let me show you. So I've put my spool of thread on here, put a little spool cap on, then I follow here. It's telling me it goes behind this, and then we start. You can follow the arrows and the numbers. It's gonna go one, down here we'll have two, go up to three, and so it's real simple to do. So I'm coming down here. Number two is right there, so it's showing me like a U-turn. I have to come up this way. And then again, number three is here, and you just turn the hand wheel. It will bring the take-up lever out, so it goes behind that, back down to four. Four goes behind this thread guide, there's one thread guide there, and then there's always gonna be a thread guide right above the needle. So to thread the machine, we made sure that it went right past this first guide that's right above the needle. Now we're ready to thread the needle itself. So I'm gonna bring this down. This goes over this side and under this little hook right there. Okay, so you see how it goes over that side and under this, and then right onto under this little hook. 
Then when it's in position, all you got to do is pull this back and up. And that threaded the little needle for me. So I'll show you again. And it's going to take a little getting used to right when you first get your machine, especially if you've never had a machine with a needle threader before. But what I like about this is that it's not spring activated. I'm actually in control. So I can see where it's in position and I can turn my hand and make it pull right through the needle eye so it threads my needle. Now I'm gonna briefly walk you through all the little buttons and stuff that's on the front of the machine. Here we have speed control. And what the speed setting means is that if it's all the way to the lowest setting and I have the foot pedal completely floored, it's only gonna go slow. So I'll show you a quick sample of how that works. It's on the, low, on the slowest setting and I have the foot pedal completely floored and you can see how slow it's stitching. Now if we want to speed it up, you can do that as well, okay? Now you can see that I cut my thread right there. It has a blade on the side here, so if you just swipe it as you stitch and go, then you can cut your last threads right there. Here is an auto lock button. We have our reverse button here. And then this is your tension dial. The machine does have a drop-in bobbin. When it comes to the stitches here, the machine has a little display. Everything is done just on this little screen. So up here, what's highlighted is the number, so that's telling you the number of the stitch, okay? If you wanna change the stitch width or length, you also have those features here. So you can see that my stitch width is set to a 3.5, and then for the stitch length is set at a 2.2, and that's a little small for me. But if you wanna go up, if you're doing basting stitches, you put it up to a 5.0, and so you do have that option, okay? And then to select your stitches, you would just go here, and then you just have to go up or down. So that's the only thing. I mean, granted, it's only 50 of them, but you would have, like, if you wanted to go to 17, you have to go down each one, until, or down or up on each one to get to the number you want to do, okay? Now, the letters that you see down here correspond to the presser foot that you should have on the machine to do each of these stitches. So for the basic one, the letter A, that's the universal foot. For these buttonhole options here, you need to have the R foot on. So you would come in here, check your manual, pick out the R foot, and put that in there. The feet pop on and off really easily. Let me shut off this light. This little red button, you just press that and the foot falls off. So it's super easy to do. If you wanted to change it, say you were ready to put in a zipper. Here's my zipper foot. You just put it right underneath that and just bring the presser foot down on it. When you bring it back up, the foot is already attached. Again, to take it off, you just press the red button and it just pops right off. Super easy to use. So that's helpful that you don't have to be dealing with the screwdrivers to put your feet on and on. And now let me show you some samples so you can see what all the machine can sew through. So here I have just two layers of plain quilting cotton. So that's pretty simple. I have some fleece here doubled up. And notice that I didn't change my foot, so I'm still using the regular universal foot, and I haven't switched over to a walking foot yet, so that stitch is fine. And then of course, what I always love to do with sewing machines is to test them on sewing through denim. So here we have just two layers. Now I'm gonna take this out and double it up. So we're gonna make this into four layers of denim. And this denim is from an old pant leg from some jeans I had, so it's pretty sturdy. Here I'm sewing through four layers of denim and it stitches nicely through there, and I'm not even using a denim needle, so I was pretty impressed with this. But of course, the final test comes when I double that again, and now I'm gonna stitch through eight layers of denim. So now eight layers is a little too bulky to get this to feed through evenly, but there's a little black button. I'm gonna tip the foot forward and press that black button in on the backside. That is going to engage and hold the foot right at the same level of the bulk of the fabric. And now you'll see that the fabric feeds through nice and evenly. Here I am even doing some reverse stitches through the eight layers, and the DC 2014 stitches through the eight layers like nothing. I also went ahead and tried out some of the different decorative stitches the DC 2014 has and I looked at it on the front and the back and the stitch quality really was great on both sides. So this is another great feature of the machine. You get great stitch quality and a lot of different decorative stitches that you can use to embellish all kinds of things from clothes to your home decor projects. And that's it for my sewing machine review of the new Janome DC 2014. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.